Being a single mom and doing it all by yourself is brutal. Learn the brain and energy tools to get back to your center and overcome your challenges. Welcome to a new episode of Single and Doing It All, uh, the podcast to help single moms live a more harmonious life and co-parent with the universe. Today, my guest is someone who deals with the body and I wanted to uh, interview her because I think that everything is linked, body, mind and spirit and you cannot compartmentalize one independently from the others. So her name is Erica Zeal. She's a core exercise and facial specialist whose mission is to help women heal their body through movement, mindset, and wellness, inspiring women to regain hope, but also experience true life-lasting results. Erica is the founder and creator of the Core Rehab Program, Knocked Up Fitness Membership, Instruction Trainer Courses, Course Studio, and her Core Connections Podcast. She believes that anything you want to improve about your health and body, you can. And that's good because I too. <laughs> Welcome, Erica. How are Thank you? you? Good. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm excited because I know I personally I'm going to learn some stuff today. That's something I really wanted to cover. Um, before we go into the questions, I would love to know how you, what's your story? How did you end up doing what you're doing today? Well, it really all starts from, you know, my childhood. I grew up with a lot of knee pain starting at the age of five. Oh, wow. And the doctor always told my parents, oh, it's just growing pains. I kept saying like, oh, she's going to outgrow it. She's going to outgrow it. And then by the age of 14, I still had it. And I loved sports and all that. And I was always like out halfway through because my knees just couldn't handle it. So many nights just like almost like crying myself to sleep. I grew up taking way too much Motrin, <laughs> which oh. is something now I pride myself in. Like I do not take it anymore um, at all. And um, yeah, so I it actually ended up sending me onto this route of learning how to strengthen my body. And I recognized like, oh, through strengthening my legs, it was starting to help my knees. And so then I studied exercise science in college. And by the age of 21, I basically had rehabilitated myself. And no doctor could fix me prior to that. Wow. So I have this thing with doctors, right? Because I'm like, you know, in this whole body approach. So that's what really like set me into this direction to start with. Um, and then through college, um, I started teaching mat Pilates. Um, my mentor at the time had recommended it. Like it was kind of, we didn't really know too much about it, especially here in the Midwest. And then when I moved to Southern California, I actually ended up um, doing all my Pilates equipment training um, way back in like 2005. And I just, I fell in love with it. And I literally, I say to this day, like it saved me because I was also an over-exerciser at that time because I would lift a lot of weights. I'd work out like crazy amounts and I was teaching like boot camp classes and I was literally burning myself out to the point yeah. where I had adrenal exhaustion. And so that's where it's in my early twenties, I was dealing with all sorts of just hormone stuff too, wow. along with the exercise stuff. And I really started connecting the dots to how everything's so intertwined. Um, and you know, it's just like, I'm, I'm a very outside the box thinker. I like to look beyond like, okay, I yes, fitness kind of was my background, but, um, then I started understanding more about the core and pelvic floor and fascia through just not only my own body of being pregnant with three babies, but working with so many other moms and women. Um, and it's just, you know, I just, I'm, I'm that person. I even said today to one of my clients, I'm like, I wish sometimes I could just be okay. Just like, with what I'm doing right now. You know what I mean? But I'm like, I'm like, no, I have to keep learning because I know there's more. It's that whole idea of like, once you start to learn something, you're like, oh, well, but then what about this? And what about that? So I'm like a big, like, I just, I just continue to learn and morph it all into everything I do. And I always am experimenting with myself. <laughs> yes. And, yeah. That's where we start. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and plus we are, they're discovering new things every day. So you have to keep up with it. Absolutely. 
And now you have me personally interested because my 23-year-old daughter is what I would call an over-exerciser, even though for her it's not too much because she loves it. And she noticed that when she was doing like you, the weightlifting and the really boot camp style, very intense exercises, it didn't do well to her body. And she started little by little approaching new stuff like yoga and Pilates. And you mentioned hormonal stuff. So do you find that by doing what you're doing today, Pilates and and, uh, other stuff, it also helps balance your hormones? Indirectly, I do believe that it can have a positive effect because a lot of it comes down to stress, right? Like yes. so many conversations um, end up like, okay, when we get to the root, I'm always like, let's go to the root of what's going on and not just look at the symptoms. It's your body talking to you, right? Mm-hmm. So um, because stress can cause hormonal imbalances and especially with women who, if you are, if your period has stopped, right, that's a big sign that yeah. we are overdoing it. Um, maybe we're not nourishing our body with enough calories and I'm not a cal- calorie in calorie out person. I'm really yeah. quality, right? I'm really all about quality. I'm all holistic and everything. Um, but sometimes as women, we actually don't eat enough food. Um, and so for exercising and, and just really essentially burning ourselves out, what happens is the brain, our HPA axis of our brain says, okay, body, we have to conserve. And that's when our adrenals start to like, the function of our adrenals actually starts to kind of slow down because the body's like, we have to conserve. Our cortisol can go up. And then that's when you see this, it's when a lot of women can start to have a cycle of so much goes in disarray because we are pushing our bodies to the brink, right? Even though, yeah. like, because there's, I, I have these conversations all the time, women who just feel like, but I have to have a hard, intense workout to feel like it was effective. But the reality of it is it actually could be why you're not getting the results that you want to get. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had over the years with women. And I'm like, it's all about let's work out smarter, not harder. Because if we're trying to lose weight and we are our body's already in a stress state. Like if you're already thinking, I need to lose weight, lose weight, lose weight, right? And then you've maybe cut your calories. Maybe you're not even eating enough calories. And then you're going to go and like, let's really like exhaust our body by exercising and getting on that treadmill and just being a hamster, right? Kind of thing. So um, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. We have to like almost do the opposite. And that's why I'm all about like, less can be more gentle can be so effective um, because we start removing stagnation in the body we start to see a decrease in stress women actually become more connected with their body because we're not so fixated now on like we have to burn x amount of calories it's like we need to turn inward to our body and that's why i talk about healing the body through movement yeah. because so many women and women don't even recognize it till we take a step back because awareness is like the first step in anything in yes. life, right and i'm all about yeah. helping to bring awareness for women in their body um, because your body's always speaking to you right it's just a matter of whether we're listening and so when women start to really recognize like oh yeah that incontinence i've been having or yeah my back does hurt when i go to that workout class but they ch- they ignore it. And, and it's just in partly because from a societal perspective, that's what so many other people do. So then so many other women just fall in line or they might mention, Oh, you know, I don't really feel comfortable doing those jumping jacks or those box jumps because I pee a little bit, but another woman next to her says, Oh, well, that's just normal, honey. Like keep doing it, you know? And it's, it's, and we can reverse and heal anything in the body. I'm a true believer in that. <laughs> that's, that's conditioning from society. And it's very mm-hmm. present in many areas of our life. So that's great that you mentioned that because there are certain topics that are kind of taboo. And incontinence is one of them. I find people don't yes. really talk about it. Nope. But when I do. Had, <laughs> that's great. That's amazing. <laughs> Because do you see that, are there any warning signs? So you mentioned one like doing the jumping jack and and having that happening. Are there any warning signs where you need to say, okay, I need to pay attention because this is the beginning and it's going to end up being worse when I go Well, yeah, incontinence really is kind of that first big warning sign. There's others more, but I think the others are more about like, not connecting correctly with your pelvic floor. And that's a very, like, women don't understand what that even means or feels like because we've been so conditioned to think of 
kegels or kegels, right? Yeah. However you want to say them. Um, and I have my own, own thoughts on that. Um, but incontinence is, I like to say that's your big first, like big warnings. I like your body's like, hello, warning, 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 you know, and you can reverse incontinence. Every woman I work with that learns my methods, incontinence can be reversed. Definitely. Absolutely. Um, and if we don't start to pay attention to our body when the incontinence starts, then women start to deal with pelvic organ prolapsing, where then like we have the bladder or the uterus or even the recta, the intestines can slip down through the vagina. And so women will start to feel like a little bulge and they're like, what is this? And so initially if they go to their doctor, a lot of times they'll be like, oh yeah, you have pelvic organ prolapsing. And they'll say, oh, well go do physical therapy. And that can be helpful if you have a good pelvic floor physical therapist, that's the key word, good. Um, don't be afraid to switch uh, to physical therapists if you're not happy with the first ones. Um, but I also find like that's a part of it, but we also have to look at the whole body, right? Yeah. If we're going for to heal our pelvic floor, but then we're going back to our high intensity workout class, it's like we have to, we have to pull back on that to heal the body. And then I do believe though, because I see it all the time, then you can work your body back up to it, but we have to pull it back for a while while we're healing to then slowly work up to it. And I end up seeing the women, you know, after they've had, you know, had to have a hysterectomy because of the pelvic organ prolapsing, yeah. because there was no conversation before yeah. from a doctor yeah. that like, oh, you can he work to heal this. And oh, we should actually be having these conversations before any of this even starts, like the incontinence and all that, yeah. but they're not happening. Um, and so, and even just having a hysterectomy, it doesn't fix, it might fix like something coming out of your vagina, but it's not actually fixing the problem because we still have it strengthened. Like I say, like you cannot cheat strengthening fascia of your body, which is, yeah. you know, all the connective tissue of the body. And there's so much we can do with it. Um, so you just can't cheat that. Like surgery might be, seem like a quick fix, but it can actually then lead to other issues that can come about because now you have one less organ in your body to support and connect other things <laughs> yes yeah no it's a quick fix but it doesn't fix it long term no for the listeners who are not familiar with the fascia can you give mm -hmm. a little bit of description like explanation of what the fascia is yeah so fascia is actually one we have one fascia in our entire body which means everything is so connected in our body and fascia is like this sheath that runs over our muscles through our muscles our skin um, it actually wraps around all of our nerves in our body so this is where it's really really exciting and i love this stuff because we can change at a cellular level the way fascia functions um, and we can lengthen it and strengthen it and create more of it so for people that have nerve impingement right like an example is like at your si joint sometimes it could be because the pelvis is misaligned but we also don't have enough space between our bones and the bones of our spine so when what i teach we create space so when we can start to create space um, and fascia because we can strengthen it and it actually can be stronger than our muscles of our body oh, which wow. is what's really really cool because it's like that's why I have turned a lot of my focus to yeah we strengthen muscles but it's really from a fascial perspective so I do a lot of like just even sitting up nice and tall throughout your day your fascia will form in the direction in which you move so if we sit, spin our days hunched and rounded forward our fascia forms that way and it becomes tighter in that direction Okay. But if we spend our days being tall and lengthened, our fascia will strengthen in that direction. So that's why it's very important. Posture is such a big, big, big part of, um, of all of what I teach as well. And so a good example, I always use this example because it's a really good visual for women. So if we think of like a, a scar and like a, say, let's say a cesarean scar. Um, and the fascia around it can be really like muddled and just all entangled. And a lot of women with a cesarean um, scar, they say it's really numb. They don't have any feeling in it, right? Mm -hmm. And it, but the really cool thing is when you actually start to wake up the deep core muscles, wake up the pelvic floor the way it's supposed to be woken up, all of a sudden, well, in a period of actually typically a couple of weeks, um, she'll start to get feeling back around that incision site and that scar tissue, and it'll start to pink like get it'll get blood flow back to it right all of a sudden from having like that kind of bluish gray color now it'll be pink again yes. and she'll start to be able to feel it so what we're doing is we're actually you know at that cellular level and the striations of the fascia is we're we're 
lengthening it out so it's it's more what's the word um so it's not as muddled right and it, it yes. can connect yeah, better yeah yeah it's really cool <laughs> that is that is and uh i experienced that with a uh, surgery that i had on my foot because i broke my foot and it was kind of not flat and you have to massage it and really mm -hmm. divide the blood to come back into the yes. area and uh, yes it, it makes such a difference uh, so if someone thinks that she's not flexible, it could be actually starting in the fascia and that's where you should start before even the muscle. Yeah, well, the fascia is so intertwined with the muscle, so you can't always fully like separate the two necessarily. But the biggest difference is like when we think of muscles, like um, let's think of a bicep curl, for example, right? Okay, so you're standing there, you're doing a bicep curl, we're working the bicep. But when we actually think of like really elongating through that arm, we wrap around from our shoulders, because most of like our shoulders just go up and down and we too, spend too much time of our day like jamming our yeah. shoulders. But when we like, our shoulders actually do this like spiral motion. Um, and so when we can reach and we lengthen long, like through our fingertips, that's more of a fascial length and so yeah you're going to feel a little muscular connection but like fascia likes um opposition so like when you just reach your arm and you reach through your all your fingers and you lift tall and you're kind of like almost like pulling your arm back into your socket and reaching through your fingers that's where we get this fascial reach so a lot of times yes it can be the fascia actually that's really more restrictive than the muscles um and so when we actually just work on opposition through the body and I like active, I don't like static stretching. It actually can cause the tissue to recoil. I find that's how I like to explain it is like, instead of doing what we want it to do, you've kind of pissed it off. Okay. <laughs> and then the, like, like the typical one is like the, you know, the runner stretch where you pull your leg up, you know, and you stretch the hamstring. Yeah. Um, so instead of doing it where you're just like leaning into the stretch and just kind of like really pulling, you actually want to activate. You want to press down into the heel and like lift up through the body. So we actually want to start to activate a little bit through the muscular and of course the fascial system. And when we do that, all of a sudden you will start to feel like, oh, now I can actually go farther because the body is supported. It's when we're like hanging out in our joints that the body's like, oh, no, no, that's not, that's not comfortable for me because I actually risk injury. But yeah. when we have support through our body, um, it, like this, I, like, it's like magic can start to happen. But it's a whole new way of moving it is. and connecting our body. It's very foreign because we've not, we've not grown up being no. taught this way. <laughs> we haven't been taught yeah. that. And no. um, I know that, um, so I, I'm not very familiar with Pilates, not so much. I'm more familiar with yoga. And I see that when you have a good teacher, you make the stretching non-passive. You also engage something else like you were yes. talking about. Yes, and absolutely. It, it makes such a difference. It does. It's, uh, first of all, you, to me, I feel it like stepping in some kind of additional power. I don't know. That's how I feel in my body. And so because you had pain since a very young age, I suspect that if you had start, started earlier, you would have healed your body earlier. So we can start with our kids, right? Oh, absolutely. And I have of my three kiddos, they're now 13, 10, and eight. Um, my 13 year old, because now she's at that age where she's almost as tall as me, which is crazy. And so, you know, her activity that she does, so like I'm working with her on like how to do squats because when she does them, it's all rag dolly and like knees in. And I'm right. like, no, 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 like we have to learn how to do this um, the right way. So absolutely. And my son does competitive gymnastics, which I've had my, oh. my professional thoughts on that have been kind of, you know, <laughs> crazy. So I, I do some work with him and we try to work on this because I do so much you know, stretching and flexibility, but I've right. worked with him over the years to teach him how to do it in a way that again, we're supporting our joints. Mm -hmm. um, so we're not leading to injury down the road because I've worked with, um, I've not worked professionally with any uh, male gymnasts, but I've worked with female gymnasts that have done gymnastics or dance like all through college. Um, and 
there's always all sorts of, they're really tight in their pelvis because they've been so much tucking and jamming of their pelvis. Um, and especially when it comes to like pregnancy and having babies, they have a really hard time opening their pelvis. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of gymnasts and professional dancers or w w women that have done it like through college at least ha can't birth a baby out of their canal. And I'm just speaking from my experience. I'm sure there are women out there that have had been fine with that. And knowing what I know now, um, cause that was earlier on in my career and knowing what I know now, I'd be curious to see if doing more of the active opening and stuff that I teach a lot more, um, with my pregnant moms, if that would help some of that, because when we're so locked down in our pelvis, because of that forceful movement that we've done as a child, um, it's, it's interesting how it transfers into our adulthood when we're not, we don't, we're not really then retaught how to, okay, how do we rebalance our body? That's actually more, um, what's the word? Like fundamental for life <laughs> because we're no longer doing that sport. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it's, it, well, it's obvious. I mean, that when something is out of balance when you're younger, the more you grow in age, the more painful it becomes. Yes. I, that for myself, I have to pay attention with my neck because I'm like that all the time. So I'm. So you need really, to sit, like, like yeah. open up, like, okay, so here's a, here's a Q and I like to do is like open up across your sternum, like up across here and just let your shoulders relax. So see how, did you see how you pulled your shoulders back? Yeah. So instead of pulling them back, let your shoulders relax lift across the sternum and then you want to feel like your bra line like think about your bra line or a little above your bra line that's what we should use be using to support our neck and our head and then all of a sudden we start to feel this elongation yeah. up to the top of the head and then in time you'll do it more naturally but it just naturally lengthens the neck you relax your shoulders because so we've been conditioned to like jam our shoulders down or pull yes. our shoulders back but when you do that you put tension in your neck so when you just like relax your shoulders and lift up through the sternum, now some women feel like they're sticking their boobs out, but I'm like, it, you, you don't look like it. You'll actually look more confident and taller and stronger. So yeah. just do it. It's just like, we get support from underneath our chest. Um, and the next layer of it too is like, how are we sitting with our pelvis? Like, like right now I'm sitting on a yoga block cause I'm weird like that. <laughs> and sitting in like a, like a deep squat but um but i'm up on my sits bones so if you're sitting on a chair like make sure you're not tucking your booty like yeah. you want to really be sitting up so you can feel a little connection in the underside of your pelvis and just feel this nice lift all the way through the top of your head and the more you can start to do that because we get to this point where again like kind of that forceful movement we're like we force our body to do this we force our body to do that and again that actually works against us when we can just go with our body and and if it even when it's not doing exactly what we want it to do we need to be kind to our body and just tell our body like hey i hear that my neck like I, like it's like almost talking to say your neck is tight, right? Mm -hmm. Like you almost want to talk to your body and say, okay, neck, I hear you. Like I acknowledge, like acknowledge that that pain is there and say, okay, um, what can I, what needs to be done? Maybe it's because you are just more stressed, right? That happens. A lot of women feel stress in their neck. Um, maybe it is because you're like, oh wow, I have been pulling my shoulders up and you just need to bring awareness to it. And like, just use our body to support us. Like we have forgotten our bodies and society has forgotten. Like we have this amazing system that our body is and we need to turn inward to it to help us instead of always looking for a quick fix somewhere yes. else. <laughs> and, and to me, it's also coming from learning to ground in your body because a lot of people, especially the extra sensitive people you know, the one who, because I, I, I do energy work too, so I tend to absorb everything around uh, me. So you yeah. tend to put your awareness somewhere out there, not in your body. And so you're not, when I first learned to feel how it feels to be in your body, it was totally unfamiliar to me. It was foreign. But when you start grounding and feeling your body, your body is dialoguing with you all day long. And you were talking about talking to your neck, I do, in my, my membership, we have inner journeys, I call them, and we go into the body and ask because you will get your inner wisdom kicking in and give you yes. answers. Yes, it's I love that. It's so mm -hmm. intertwined. It's, you, you have to work with the body as well if you want to uh, yeah. even grow spiritually. Everything is together. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I had a... I, 
Oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going um, to no, so I was, an exercise. You gave it already, so I love it. <laughs> yeah. So, no, I was having a conversation with um, a friend of mine who is very spiritual as well, and she's been doing my program. And she had this, like, huge epiphany how she'd been having some dysfunction with her body and she was, you know, had gone to professionals and she, cause she just wanted someone to fix her, you yeah. know, and, and which the timing, like, she was just ready for what I was teaching her because she was like, Erica, this work is like, I have the power, like I needed yes. to do the inner work. And it is, and we can't shortcut that. And I no. cannot, and I try to scream this from the mountaintops, but again, if like, you have to be ready, for the work you at least have to be ready for that first step to be open yes. to be like yes you know like and it's so like we have so much power within us and I feel like even on my journey personally I'm like oh wow I feel like I'm almost just at the beginning of it like the more you start to yeah. discover the more you're like oh wow there's I can't wait to see what you know what else shows up <laughs> yes it evolves it's it's magical almost yeah and, it is um and there is so much wisdom and pain and trauma in our body. And the only way to let it out is to become aware of it. That's the first yeah. step. That's the awareness. Yeah. And there's research out there now that, which I've been trying to find because I have intuitively felt this for so long because I've seen it with clients, like, um, especially when we start doing, you know, the pelvic floor work and that yes. deeper layer, um, women will be like, Erica, I just felt like I had to cry. And I was like, yes. you should cry. Yes. And you know what? We, we have been so conditioned again to like, shove it all inside myself included <laughs> i'm a work in progress too but when we actually acknowledge like there's more to the movement than just the movement itself and i've been using that word a lot more of movement practice instead of your workout or your exercise mm -hmm. because i think it encapsulates just that deeper work when we're doing our movement practice versus I think like the word workout and fitness can be so heavy and just like let's kill our bodies and get a good workout it's like yeah but when we actually do the deep deeper work and we uncover those things um and it can be maybe not even maybe not even events but maybe they're there inside and you they come up as like anger or oh, yeah. sadness or you don't even know and you're like but something just feels off and I just feel like I need to let some tears come out and it's like let those tears come out but I teach a different layer of like visualizing um, whatever is coming up for them, actually leaving their body versus yes. just the emotion. Because yes. I, I'm sure you found the same thing. If we express emotion, that's great, but that's only like, like a little bit of yes. it. Actually, taking that power of visualizing whatever is yeah. coming up in the body um, and leaving, um, it's there's huge power in that, and it's, it's so amazing. <laughs> the brain works with image. It's it's the language of the brain, and I find too that I do tapping sessions, EFT, okay. emotional freedom yeah. technique. And when the time is to flow the emotion that was stuck out, I also ask them to get an image, and I never impose my image because whatever comes to you is your right image, exactly. and it can be yes. so different. And you actually feel it while you look at it in your mind, leaving your body, you feel the relaxation in your body. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. it's a process. It's really, it's really strong and powerful. It is very strong and powerful. And something else that comes up when I do this work is so many, because I literally make them like, stop for a couple minutes and we do like a presencing breath work and I don't put it in a box. It's very like, I want everyone to create it for themselves. Right. Um, so I just try to be there to guide and not be like, put certain things in a box. I mean, movement stuff sometimes is, but, um, this other layer of it and it's amazing what will come up. And so many women say to me, they're like, wow, I just, I should do this more often. And I feel more space in my life because we're so in a like, go, go, go to do, you know, world. Um, that's actually, it's like interesting how that has actually become a part of what I do because I have to help women find the time and it doesn't take a lot of time. And it's not actually even finding the time. It's reframing our daily life because exactly. we stop and reflect on our daily life. And you're like, oh, wow, I have a lot of time where I'm meddling over here and I'm yeah. not actually being productive. And, oh, you could spend 10 minutes doing some movement practice um, that's going to really propel you forward in your life. They're like, oh, yeah, I hadn't thought of that. You know, it's simple things, but we all need that person to help reflect our life. 
um, you know, I don't know. It's very, it's, it's and, fun and, and exciting. <laughs> that's, that's perfect for the question I, I wanted to ask you because to me, taking the time to be with yourself in what way or form that it may be is self-love. And I want, I, we are very big on self-love in my uh, community. So I wanted to ask you for your definition of self-love because a lot of women, when I ask them, are you practicing self-love? What is self-love to you? They don't even know where to start. Yeah. And there can be so many definitions. So I would love to have your, your definition of this. Yeah, I mean, I like to try to keep things simple. And I think the initial step of self-love is honestly just having a conversation with your body and, you know, really just being present with yourself. Like it could be as simple as that because that, the power in just acknowledging yourself and your body and your thoughts and whatever might be coming up for you, good, bad, or indifferent, and we get rid of the judgment. Exactly. That is what really can just push someone forward to be like, yes, I'm deserving of this life and whatever else it might be. And, and this is where I like over the years, you know, I going from like, I mean, I would love for every woman to be able to work out 30 or 60 minutes a day, but the, the reality of that, that's, that's not realistic for most women. So I have gone away from that because I actually realized the power in even doing 10 minutes of movement practice a day because it gets her started. It gets her in that action. But before action, which most people do it backwards, they start with the action stuff because the to-dos is easy, right? It's the easy stuff. Yeah. And then they turn into more of that self-reflection where ideally if we could, even if you can't get your movement practice in, um, just when you're driving your car and running kids around or when you're just whatever, it can be so simple. Like it doesn't have to be a seated meditation. It could literally be you going for a walk and you're like, you know what, on this walk, I'm going to really commit to like what's going on in my body, yeah. what thoughts are coming up and just doing bringing awareness to not judging yourself. Um, because we get into that set of like, oh, this is a good thing or a bad thing or whatever. I'm like, who cares if it's, who cares? Like just let's, let's drop the good or bad and just be who we are right now, because that's actually what can help a woman move into that next phase of healing her body, becoming stronger, helping with the anxiety and the like, I mean, the list goes on and on, yeah. right? <laughs> and, and the judgment part, is what is going to hold people back from looking at their stuff. Because even before they can look and start maybe changing, there is so much judgment that they don't even go there. It's not safe. So letting go of the judgment is, is crucial, crucial. Um, and do you find this, like I feel like a lot of times the judgment is held there by past experiences. Oh, yeah. Again, and so many times we don't realize it doesn't mean they're bad. And I always like to clarify like people can think of I don't love the t word the trauma word right because everybody's perspective is different and, and it could have been something as simple as the way your mom said something to you when you were oh, 11 yeah. right that mm -hmm. kind of stuck to you or your mom was a worrier and that carried over to you and it's, it's not necessarily bad and things don't have to be bad to affect you in a way but you might be holding on to something that's actually you know, inside of you as a lot of times it's anger that can really be holding us back and you have to let that out. And a lot of times it'll come out in tears and you just might have to get kind of mad and like recognize it, but you got to attach that visualization piece with that and actually let it like leave your body. So then you can start, like, I feel like that's a piece of that judgment. That's like, hold it's like, it's like this, like brick holding us down or this boulder in our way of like getting to this next layer. Yes. Because the judgment comes with shame. That's what we get. That's what we're conditioned to do to ourselves. There is the judgment and then there is the shame about that. And that will, that will keep it inside instead of flowing out. What I find, I, and tell me if you see that with women and working with their body, is also that sometimes bringing something in that wasn't there. For example, with women who are very, very perfectionistic in the way that they judge their body, they look at themselves and they, without realizing they just hate a part of their body daily, daily. And that part never improved because it's daily beaten up, if you want, mentally, because, oh, I hate my thighs or oh, I hate my butt or whatever it is. And daily there is that, that hate that is really flowing into the part of the body. So 
what I have people do, what I have my moms do is to just, let's say a week, they're going to concentrate on their arm and thank the arm, not even thinking about how it looks, just thank it for being there and everything they do. And I see that our cells respond to that. Is that something you notice too? Oh, absolutely. Um, and I really focus on having my women uh, give their body gratitude. And that's where when we, I kind of, we talk about the, um, like, I, I talk about it as like, stop fighting your body, basically. Mm -hmm. It's kind of my like subject line with this whole conversation, because that's what women are doing is they're fighting their body. The more we fight, the less it's going to listen to yeah. us and respond. So the first thing you have to do is obviously be aware that you're fighting your body. Um, and gratitude is a big part of that. So it is, I always bring in the gratitude of like, let's, what is one thing about your body you can be grateful for? And like, that's all it has to be. Let's start with one thing. And it's those slow and steady little changes. Um, it, Cause it is really just about getting someone started. Once I can get that ball rolling for her, yeah. It's like all of a sudden, I, I, I love our, the coaching calls that I do because you can just like, you can feel that like, wow, like they almost have this epiphany of like, it's, yes. it's this seems so simple. Why did it take yes. me so long to get here? But because we're so conditioned and a lot of it's subconscious conditioning, which yeah. is why there's that fight in the beginning. Um, but if we can surrender to the fact that like, okay, like this is what's going on, which is why that whole like not having the judgment, right? But we have yeah. to get to there. Um, yeah, it's so powerful. And you're absolutely right. Like our cells do respond. And there's research, there's like yeah. legit research out there about that, you know? It's really, really neat how we're seeing more and more. Um, I'm hearing more and more people and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's what I do. It's so great to hear that there's more conversation going yeah. on. And we all kind of do it maybe in our own ways, yeah. but we're all after that same result and we're all doing it in a way that is such a holistic you know, way for women that doesn't involve medication and surgeries and all this stuff that actually is, is kind of what's standing in your way of actually making that progress. It is. And it's beautiful because the people who need you will be drawn to you. The people who need me and would resonate with me would be drawn to me. That's the beauty of it. I always tell people there is no competition because yes. your audience is your audience and they can overlap, but it's a question of resonating. And that's the beauty of it. Absolutely. So you're, yeah. doing, you're doing also the work of a coach on a lot of mm -hmm. uh, levels, even yeah. mental, not even on the body. So well, yes. Yeah, starting out as a personal trainer, even way back when I was like, oh, this is so much more than the working out. I mean, there are times where I'm like, I have, would have clients tell me things that I'm like, I don't think you should have told me that. <laughs> like, you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, you know, I'm a very, like, I, I keep full confidential stuff, but it's, it's just, it was very eye opening at such a young age when you're like the movement practice brings it, like it helps people process. Yeah. It, it's just like, it's that physical practice uh, which is very important, right? Because we can do all this work too, which is great, but it's the complement of being able to do both that, you know, can send people into a, you know, this huge transformation. For some women, they're really going to gravitate towards movement first and they're going to resist the rest of it. Yeah. And that's why movement, I found, you know, like movement is a really good entry, like from the surface, a lot of people you know, when you look at my social media, a lot of it, you're like, oh, she teaches movement. And so we'll say I teach fitness. I'm like, I don't really teach fitness anymore because it's so much yeah. more than that. Um, but it's a great way to get people who resonate with working out to get their foot in the door. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And then as they start to hear the way that I teach things and all that, those are the women that really gravitate because they're like, wow, you like, I've never heard anyone teach this movement this way. I've never felt it that way. And I really want to empower these women to like, you know, like let's relearn how to move our body is really yeah. what I'm teaching them. <laughs> it's funny because uh, this is the opposite. I would attract women who are more ready to work inside <laughs> before they do the body, but yet yeah. you have to do it all. So it's yeah. just the entry door that is different mm -hmm. uh, and where you you're more comfortable going first without resisting too much. It's, mm -hmm. it's really funny. Yeah. Um, before, we, before we go, first of all, where can people reach you? I'll put it in the description as well. 
Yeah, everything's at my website. It's ericazeal.com um, or on Instagram at ericazeal and Facebook. It's actually Erica Zeal Fitness because the other was already taken. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, everything is there. And so if anyone has any questions, you're absolutely welcome to reach out. I also have my podcast. It's called Core yeah. Connections. And uh, yeah, we talk about a wide variety of things, but it all comes back to holistic health, basically. That's how I found you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, through your podcast. Um, so is there, if there was one or two things you wanted to leave the audience with, the most important things to know? what would you leave them with? Well, I think just continuing with our conversation today is to stop fighting your body, like, and just really be aware of it and do it without judgment. Um, and, and here's the thing too. And I find in the beginning of this process, uh, especially like, let's say for example, like you're going through a workout, you know, practice and movement practice, or you're at yoga or Pilates or whatever it is. And you're like, what, like, there might be a move that might be hard for you to do. And you're like, I'm just not feeling it right. Or maybe it's hurting my back. And instead of getting angry or mad at your body, and again, this is where we have to bring awareness to the fact that we're even doing that, to then acknowledge your body. And you can say things, and you don't have to say this stuff out loud, but just say to your body, okay, body, I hear you. Um, what, can I, what can I do to help? improve this. And maybe today I can't do that exercise. Right. Or it may mean, Oh, I have to decrease my range of motion. Like I teach all of those things. So I teach women how we can continue to move and move in a way that really is building our body up so that if we have these big goals of getting back to running and we've got to pull it back right now to heal our body, we're really, really acknowledging what's going on in our body. And we know that in time we're going to get back to running. And when women do that and they stop fighting and forcing things to happen that were not ready to happen yet, then before you know it, she does get back to running. This is an example, right? And there's other things. Um, and she's like, Erica, I've had five babies and my runs are stronger and faster than before babies. And I'm not peeing my pants. And my back and hip doesn't hurt. Like, all these things but in the beginning i have to really talk her back so it's really just like let's stop fighting our body so we can get to where we want to go yeah um that's really my and that's kind of a lot in that but that's a really big 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 one <laughs> yeah no being more gentle with your body to start with yeah you, yes great i want to thank you that was very informative i loved it um, well, thank you so much <laughs> And I'm surprised at, about the depth of your work because as, when I looked at your website, I saw that it was the body, but I realized that it's way more than that. Yeah. So that's amazing. That's a great way to do work in the world. Thank, thank you, you again for being here today. Yes, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> My pleasure. And for our listeners, I'll see you next week. See you or you'll hear about me depending on where <laughs> you listen or watch and with another topic. Have a wonderful week and go extend your fascia and be gentle with yourself. <laughs> Bye. Being a single mom can be challenging, but you don't have to face it alone. Join our community at facebook.com slash groups slash single and doing it all and receive tools, tips and free group coaching. And if you like this podcast, please review and rate us on iTunes. I would really appreciate it.